I built this Excel dashboard in just three easy steps. If you struggle to extract insights from your data, an Excel dashboard may be what you need. But don't be intimidated. A dashboard doesn't have to be this huge monster that takes hours to create. In fact, sometimes the more complex dashboards can actually clutter and obscure the important information that you need from your data. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a simple and streamlined dashboard that is perfect for beginners. Along the way, I'll highlight a few key mistakes that you may be tempted to make with your first dashboard. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. If you use Excel in any capacity, you're in the right place. Check out the description for a link to my new free training, The Spreadsheet Tune-Up. In five short videos, I'll teach you the first steps that can help you to optimize any spreadsheet. The very first thing you need to do when you're about to create an Excel dashboard is to look at your source data. If it looks like this, and that means it's organized in columns and rows, you need to convert it into an Excel table, which is a special structure that gives Excel context for where your data is. So go to the Insert tab with Anywhere selected. You don't have to select all or anything. You can just be anywhere on this data and click the table button and it will ask if your table has headers. If you have a top row that has the name of each column in it, that is called the header row. So you can click OK. There can only be one header row. That's one of the um, rules for Excel tables. So now you can see that the table is formatted and there's filter buttons at the top. So now Excel knows that this is a group of data and it has a name. So if you come up here to the table name um, field, it's called table two. It always gives it a name like that, but you don't want to leave it there because that means nothing. You want to change it to, and just type in here, type in this box, change it to something descriptive. So this is school data, so I'm calling mine school data. Um, so change it to mean something for your data. Now the next thing that we need to do is change the workbook theme. So go up here to the page layout tab, and this is just a couple of things I put here so I could show you what happens when you change the theme. Because when you, when you add a shape, I'm just going to add a random shape, it will, or even a chart, it will pull from the default colors and the default font. So when you start typing something, there you go. It's using the default font. And we want to change things on the whole workbook level, not individually. So that brings me to mistake number one that people make when they're creating dashboards is they just leave the default theme. And then when they get to the part where they're adding elements, they're like, oh, I don't like that color. Okay, let's go and change it. And they change the color, they change the font of each element individually instead of on a workbook level. So it's super easy. You just go to this themes button and you can choose one of these that are available. You could also change the colors by themselves. There's a really good selection of colors. You can also go down here to customize colors and literally just change, change it to be whatever you want. Fonts too. There's lots of fonts available, but I would recommend changing it on the workbook level. And you could even set up a theme. Once you have the colors and fonts changed, you can go down here to save current theme. I already have mine saved. So you can see when I click on it, it changes everything. It changes the default color palette because these are the colors for my business that I have chosen. It changes the default font. And as long as when you are editing elements, you stick to this palette. Don't ever go to more fill colors and just choose a random color. <laughs> um, stick to what's in the palette. And then if in the future you ever were going to update the colors of their fonts, it would be really easy to just go to the page layout and you know, you can change them all with one click. The next mistake that I see people making and even in online tutorials about Excel dashboards is trying to create boxes and things using the built in grid lines like this. And that is just a recipe for disaster because then you have to make sure that everything that you want is aligned vertically. And if you wanted to, let's say, make this cell be wider, now it makes this box wider too. It just, 
is a design nightmare. And when we're creating a dashboard, we're really doing some graphic design. We want it to be easy like Canva or PowerPoint. So the mistake is trying to use the grid lines and the solution is create a canvas with the background. So just select everything that you want to be on the dashboard. I'm basically just selecting 30 rows and as many columns as fit on my screen when I'm zoomed at 100 and create a background by just shading those a color. You can, I like light color and this is your canvas. Now everything that you add is going to be a shape like this. So instead of building it using the grid lines, the grid lines is literally just the background. It's the canvas. And the next thing that you can do that just elevates it a little bit is to hide all the rows and columns that are not part of your canvas. So select the first or the next row that's not part of your canvas and then use the keyboard shortcut control shift down arrow, control shift down arrow, and that will select all the rows that are below the canvas. Then you can right click and click on the hide button. And now it just goes from the canvas to a gray background. So you can't even modify anything that's not on the canvas. We can do the same thing with the column. So go over to this first column and then use the keyboard shortcut control shift right arrow and that will select everything that is to the right of the canvas. So we can right click here and click on hide. Now we have a canvas, a, a background that is a color and this is where we can start to build out the dashboard. The next thing that you need to do before you actually build the dashboard or design it is to build all the elements on a separate worksheet. This is where you should make your charts, you should make your pivot tables, any summaries that you have, any lists. You should really think about what's important for your data, what do the users need to know from the data, and build that all out here. Now this tutorial is not about how to make a pivot table or a pivot chart, but I do want to show you a couple of neat tricks that are really easy. The first one is if you, once you have a pivot table, you can go to pivot table analyze and this button insert slicer and choose a field that you want to add a slicer on. I already have one here for district name and that's the one I really am going to use so that when I choose different districts, all of my pivot tables are linked to this slicer and so they will all update. You can see even with this one, but I'm going to delete that. Um, so slicers are really great to add an interactive element to your dashboard. This is also the place where I would build any charts that you need. This is a pivot chart and I'm going to put it on my dashboard in just a minute. The next trick I want to show you is how to create a linked picture in Excel. So this is a pivot table that lists all the schools that are in the districts that are selected by the slicer and it's sorted by enrollment total so that the top three schools will be in these first three rows and that's what I want to show on my dashboard but this is dynamic so that when I update the slicer here I'll just choose a few random districts and I go back to this table you can see that this has changed so I'm going to select the three that I want to appear on the dashboard and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut control C to copy and then you can use the keyboard or you can right click and go to paste special and then all the way down at the bottom you can paste as a linked picture and that creates this really interesting shape that you can move around you can see it kind of distorts the text um, but you can move it around like a shape but and when I show you what happens with the slicer you'll see it is actually dynamic so I'm moving, I'm changing this uh, slicer and you can see that the list of schools in this picture is updating. So that is a really cool little dynamic element that you can add to your dashboard. The next little trick I have is how to show single numbers or 
words on your dashboard in a visually appealing way. So here I have the district's total, the school's total, and the enrollment total. And these are, numbers are also linked to the slicer. So they show the totals of what is represented in this chart down here. So how can I show these on the dashboard without just copying and pasting them just like this? The trick is you're going to go to insert tab, the insert tab, and then choose smart art and then choose a smart art that you like the look of. I'm going to go to list and then choose a stacked list. So click OK. And now using this bullet point interface, I'm going to create the shape that I want. And I'll speed this up for you. So you can see I've left a blank or just a space in these circles shapes. And then I have the label in the square space. I'm going to reshape it kind of how I think it will look. It's important to make changes to the formatting at this point while it's still smart art because it's not going to be um, the whole time. So we're going to go to smart art styles and see if there's any other styles that we like. Oh, I like that. Maybe change the colors. That's kind of interesting. Okay, let's do that. Whoops. Okay, now that you have it designed the way you like, go to this reset group and click on convert to shapes. Now it's no longer smart art. These are just individual shapes that are organized and you know they go together. So now we're going to click on each of these circles and double click, go to the formula bar and type equals and then select the cell that contains the number that you want to summarize. And you can see that it just puts that number right there. So now that I have all the numbers, I'm going to change the formatting slightly to make the text white and bold. So now this is another more attractive way to present this same information. So now I have a lot of things on this calculation sheet and it's time to start actually designing the dashboard. I have one more mistake to go over, but first let's just knock out this design. So we can go to insert shapes and I like this rounded rectangle and just start adding elements, adding these shapes as containers for the elements and then go back and forth between the calculation sheet and the dashboard, copy and paste. You can see whether you like things to be mounted like this. I, I think I do like how this is mounted, but I don't like that color. So I'm gonna go over here and remember to stick to the theme styles. If you don't like something in the theme styles, um, change the theme. I like these that have some depth to them. That's kind of cool. And like I said, now it's time to just play around and do take what you've already built and put it on the dashboard in a nice way. So I've roughly added everything and you can see I um, ungrouped these and because I need them to be vertical here. So now the last design step is to just make sure that everything is aligned and to do that, to do that, grab your shapes, go to the shape format tool, and then use this align button. So I'm like aligning both of these left and then making sure that they're the same width. I'm going to align all of these. You can hold down the shift key to select multiple things. Align these all to the left. And there we go. Make sure to add a title to the top, add a title or label all of your charts, all of your summaries. That's just nice for the user. The last mistake I see people making with their first dashboards is adding as many elements as they can think of. And that's a mistake because you, you just want only exactly what you need. You want to be a minimalist when it comes to data because data itself can be overwhelming. This is a really simple dashboard. It has one interactive element, meaning one slicer, one chart. It has 
this little list that shows up and these numbers here are dynamic. It's very simple, but it's going to provide a lot of value to my users because it allows them to get the information that they need without a whole, without overwhelming them. And that's all there is to it. Let me know in the comments if you were inspired to create your first Excel dashboard.